please subscribe. The new Panamera 4E hybrid certainly generates numbers that support the new Focus. Compared with the previous Panamera hybrid, total system horsepower is up to 462 from 416, total torque has increased to 516 pounds to feet from 435 pounds to feet, and Porsche claims the new version is 0.8 second quicker to 60 miles per hour. Credit upgrades to the driveline and electric components of the powertrain. An 8 speed ZF sourced dual clutch transmission takes the place of an 8 speed torque converter automatic, bringing with it whip crack shift speeds. Per the 4 in its name, the Panamera 4E hybrid now has standard all wheel drive, whereas the previous SC hybrid was rear drive only. The new car also will be offered as a long wheelbase executive model. No matter the length, the e-hybrid is equipped with a 14.1 kWh battery pack offering 50% more capacity than before, as well as a stronger electric motor, generator, still sandwiched between the engine and the transmission, making 136 horsepower and 295 pounds to feet of torque against the old ones 95 and 229. Charge time for the batteries can be as quick as two and a half hours using the optional 7.2 kW onboard charger and a 240 volt, 40 amp power source. The internal combustion engine remains a V6 of roughly identical output, but it's a new, twin turbo 2.9 liter design rather than the former supercharged 3.0 liter. On the road, the Panamera's powertrain systems are well integrated in the hybrid auto mode, with the transition from solely electric power to hybrid operation and back being practically invisible. The car can be cycled through additional modes, e-power, e-hold, e-charge, sport, and sport plus. In e-power, the Panamera e-hybrid is capable, Porsche says, of covering up to 31 miles on electricity alone and it delivers a talky and mostly serene driving experience, save for some electric motor whine and an occasional and oddly robust vibration, thrum through the floor. The source of this thrum remains unconfirmed even after discussions with multiple Porsche engineers, but we suspect some sort of cooling equipment, as it occurred most often after bouts of hard driving and or acceleration. Sport and Sport Plus modes are intended to maximize combined hybrid performance. The former keeps battery charge at a steady level to ensure there's electric thrust when you want it, while Sport Plus actively works to recharge the batteries using the engine to make sure there's even more thrust when you want it. We can confirm that these modes execute these tasks as advertised, but they otherwise didn't seem to significantly alter the character of the car beyond firming up the suspension to various degrees. Whatever the mode, the e-hybrid offers what you'd expect from a large Porsche sedan, disciplined body control, the ability to soak up hundreds of high-speed miles, and a well-sorted ride from its standard air spring suspension. It masks its weight well with no sense of lolling or listing in corners, but the e-hybrid would feel more agile still if, well, it weren't a hybrid. It's worth pointing out that those seeking the experience promised by modes labeled Sport and Sport Plus are probably better off with the non-hybrid 440 horsepower 4S. It costs only a few thousand dollars more than the e-hybrid when comparably equipped and, despite its relative power deficiency, is quicker and the more athletic because it weighs hundreds of pounds less. The 4S gives up some fuel efficiency, although we don't yet know how much. Testing of the 4E hybrid on EPA cycles isn't complete, but Porsche says the figures are coming soon. We'll know more this summer when the e-hybrid goes on sale as a 2018 model. If you bought a 4S instead, you'd also get a predictable, conventional, braking system. The e-hybrid's regenerative braking system is actuated via a pedal that's spongy in the first few millimeters of travel and occasionally pulses under even light pressure for no discernible reason. The system's transition between regenerative and friction braking is quite noticeable, and the setup also returned varying braking force under constant pressure during single braking events. Owners will probably get used to it, 
but we doubt they'll ever be able to consistently stop with grace. Indeed, for all their ample decelerative power, the brakes are a glaring shortcoming in a car that's otherwise nicely executed. The good stuff includes sultry sheet metal that's more refined and better resolved than before. We could do without the acid green hybrid exclusive touches, though, as well as a swanky interior that centers around an attractive glossy stack lined with touch screens, capacitive switches, and haptic controls. This new secondary control setup is worlds easier to negotiate than the button palooza that was the old car's central tunnel. The overall interior design is simple and refined, and our test cars featured big slabs of dark wood and yards of buttery soft leather on almost every surface. In typical Porsche fashion, however, there remain oddities. As we noted in our first drive of the Panamera lineup, the direction and strength of airflow from the central vent is controlled via touch screen for no reason other than it seems someone neglected to say out loud, that's stupid. There are various sub-menu interfaces, and it's not always clear which of them houses a specific function. Indeed, there's little about the system that's intuitive in the way of a great smartphone. The higher ease graphics sure are pretty, though. Please subscribe.